Today, we are installing a second battery uh, for the, our solar panel system. Please enjoy the video. Hey, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do a solar upgrade. Uh, Santa Claus was nice. I guess I've been a good boy and got me another battery. So another 35 amp hours. So I'll be hooking this one up so that uh, we'll have 70 amp hours went off road. So stick around. We'll get the install done. So here's the battery box. So as you can see, when I built this, I built it for expansion and this is where the second battery is going to go right here so uh, I've just got to rig up my little mount um, got some aluminum here I'll put another piece over here and that'll stabilize it not let it rock around it's pretty tight in there so uh, you know I really don't think it's going to go anywhere so okay Okay, we talked a little bit about some of the aluminum brackets that I've got in here. So, I didn't put any on the sides because it's pretty stable, but I'm going to change that today. I'm going to put those on. So, I've gone ahead and drilled my holes for the, the next aluminum bracket for the second battery. <coughs> that bracket is right here. So, it's pretty much all set. And then I'm going to use this piece of scrap cut that in two and put a bracket on uh, to hold it vertically in place and uh, that ought to give it a really stable platform. Okay, so we got the, uh, the bracket installed, keep it horizontal, the bottom brackets installed. I use the foam that comes with the uh, the batteries to kind of cushion them. So this is where the, the first one's going to go. And there's the other bracket. So, you know, just one bolt holds it in there. It's not going to go anywhere. That'll stop it from tilting. All right, guys. So here's the finished product. So, a little messy, but all the positives on one side, jumper cable. Going over to the negative, all the negatives over here, jumper, positive, positive. So that should make sure that both batteries are draining equally at the same time. As you can see, the solar uh, ch charge controller is working. Uh, it's putting a charge on the new battery just to bring it all the way up. And uh, that's about it. I know it's kind of still a mess in parts of it, but uh, do the best I can. So, uh, that's what it basically looks like. All the electrical still works. Uh, turned out pretty good. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's a small tutorial. Uh, but it gives me 70 amp hours now instead of 35. So, it's a good modification. Um, something highly recommend. Thanks. Thank you for watching our video. And please like and Thank you. See you. This is a video of my uh, <clears throat> overlanding trailer M416. It's got the solar set up, rooftop tent. So, um, not into ham radio. Not yet, anyway. Most everybody on the East Coast seems to still use CBs. So, my wife's Grand Cherokee, we've got it hooked up with the CB, my JKU CB. So, sitting here thinking about, hey, if I drop this trailer off and I go someplace and somebody staying at camp, maybe they need a way to communicate. I haven't seen anybody do this yet. But what I did, <coughs> we mounted a CB for communications off-grid. So you can see the install right here. It's got a spring and a quick dis disconnect in case I need to take the antenna off very quickly. 
just pull down, twist, and it pops right off. Oh, put it back on there. Okay. And it's got plenty of sway. So, and, you know, it's just the antenna. Cabling runs up under the frame for uh, the rooftop tent. It goes into my wiring harness here. And it all comes into my electrical box. Maybe it's a strange place to put it. I don't know. Pop that open. It's a little messy in here. And for compact communications, just the Midland 75-822. And one of the reasons I went with this model is it's very compact. And... Happens and do not drive on flooded roads. Please report flooding to your local law enforcement agency when you can do so safely. It has all the weather channels. And that's one of the most important things you're going to need. Whenever you're off-road, you're going to want to know about what's going on with the weather, if there's any severe weather coming in, etc. So, it's a pretty, pretty straightforward install. Uh, you know, you get it into your electrical box there and wire it up pretty easy. The most difficult part is, of course, running the dang antenna cabling. But that's not a big deal. So, this gives us the ability to communicate uh, with somebody at camp if we go for a ride or if we go to some place to go fishing or kayaking, canoeing, etc., etc., and if somebody's at camp, they can monitor the radio. They can also determine what's happening with the weather. So, pretty quick and easy way to provide some off-grid communications for your overlanding trailer. Once again, I've not seen anybody do this. I thought it was a pretty neat idea. Once again, it just kind of all comes in here. Got your wiring harness. CB I don't have it mounted yet. I'm probably going to mount it up here so it just folds in and out with the root or with the uh, top. Uh, but it works out really well. Tonight, east and the good thing about this is this radio can disconnect from here. You can store it in your vehicle if you want. Uh, and this is the vehicle setup too. So it just plugs in. You've got a spare CB in case one goes out in one of the vehicles. Uh, it also turns into a portable with a battery pack and an antenna and I've got the 20 inch antennas that go with these so they get a little bit better range um, it's a great mod I uh, highly recommend it I know this is a really short video uh, but I hope you've kind of got an idea or two from it so enjoy uh, hit the subscribe button we'll try and provide some more content and let you know how things are going